Hey guys, Jason here with RWB NetSec and in today's video we're going to be going over DNS Tracer. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So first off, what is DNS Tracer? Um, it's a tool that was written several years ago by Edwin Gruthius and I hope I'm pronouncing that name right. Um, it's, it's not like any of the other tools that we've looked at so far for DNS enumeration. Um, it, it's not going to give you any super cool results that are going to let you pawn a machine and take over the world. Uh, instead, think of it kind of like running a trace route for DNS. So it allows you to see the path a request takes to get the authoritative answers for your domain. Uh, if you guys watched my other video on how DNS works on the internet, you'll, you'll kind of get a pretty good idea of how DNS Tracer works. Now, you know, obviously there's a lot more going on behind the scenes when a request is made, uh, but you can still get a picture of how your zone information is being delegated out to the other servers on the internet. So let's go ahead and open it up and take a look at the options for it. So within Kali Linux, you'll go up to Applications, Information Gathering, DNS Analysis, and DNS Tracer. And you can see when it opens up here, it gives you the list of uh, options and basic descriptions for each one. Um, now, since this is a tool that is uh, installed by default in Linux, uh, there's also a man page available for it. So you could do man DNS tracer. And the man page uh, shows the list of options and gives a little bit more detail about what each one of them does. And um, it also gives more of a description of how the tool works and then give some examples of how to use it here. So I'm going to go ahead and close the man page and we'll just leave this screen up here. Kind of minimize it a little bit. And I'm going to open another terminal window so we can start using it here. So the first thing we'll do, we'll just run a, a default scan with the program. Uh, there's two switches that I'm going to include in it. Um, I'll go ahead. We're going to type in DNS Tracer. And we're going to use a TAC V, TAC O, and then I'm going to do a scan just against msn.com. So you type that in and hit enter. You see this program is actually pretty fast. So if we scroll back up here, uh, you can see that it made a request to the uh, the initial DNS server, which in my case here, I've got mine configured to use an open DNS server. Uh, most, likely, most likely yours is going to be uh, whatever your ISP's DNS server is. Uh, with this TACV option, this tells it to be verbose in its responses. So it actually shows you the details of the DNS packets that are going back and forth. Uh, so you've got the, the questions that it asks, uh, as well as um, any answers that it gets back. And when you get down to the bottom here, you can see that uh, it pulled back the A record, which is the default query type. And it shows uh, the A record for MSN and the IP address associated with it. Now, if we wanted to take this a step farther, uh, one thing I'd like to do is show you, if you open up Wireshark, you can actually get a look at the DNS packets and see, see what they look like going across your uh, network. So if you go up to Applications, go down to uh, Sniffing and Spoofing, and then click on Wireshark. Let's click OK if you get an error there. I'll fix that later. Click OK again. Um, now, if you're not familiar with using Wireshark, if this is the first time you've opened it up, um, in a nutshell, it's basically just a program that allows you to capture the packets that are going across your local network. Uh, and you'll be able to see traffic like HTTP requests, uh, DNS, FTP, etc. So the first thing we'll do here, uh, go up and click on Capture. Go to Interfaces select your local interface 
and then click on start and I'm going to set this to just show us the DNS traffic that's going across so to do that we'll put a filter in and it will be UDP dot port oops, equals equals 53 and just click on apply there now what we'll do is go back and run that same scan again and then you can see here in Wireshark uh, it shows the, the two packets that went back and forth uh, the first packet the request going from my computer up to the open DNS server requesting an A record for msn.com and then the open DNS server responded back to my computer with the answer here and you can click on each of these packets and then come down here in this middle window and expand these different options here and get more details about the information that was contained in each of the packets so go ahead and close out of Wireshark go ahead and stop and quit without saving so now let's go ahead and look at some of the other different um, the query types that you can use instead of just pulling back the A records so I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen here uh, the first one we're gonna do uh, to specify a different query type you'll use the TAC Q option so we're gonna do uh, DNS tracer TAC Q uh, I'm gonna do for the um, let's just do an SOA record TAC O let me use the TAC 4 and msn.com hit enter so just quickly going over these options here uh, like I said the TAC Q lets you specify the query type that you want to do in this case we did SOA uh, the TAC O uh, just gives you an overview of the answers that you get back which is going to be this data here TAC 4 tells it to just query IP, IPv4 based servers so you can see here for the SOA record it came back uh, it queried the open DNS server and the answer that we got back includes the SOA record so it's got the serial number M name and R name included uh, and just real quick if you're not familiar what these items are the, the serial number is used by by the secondary DNS servers to keep track of if any changes have been made in the zone information on the primary server uh, if the serial number that the secondary server has is different than what the primary server has um, it'll initiate a zone transfer uh, the M name just specifies what the primary name server is and our name is the email address of the person that's responsible for that domain so in this case it's just msn hst at microsoft.com and we can get other information too if we go back and change that query type so instead of SOA let's just say we wanted to do uh, the NS records just change that hit enter and now you see that it comes back with the name servers for MSN and in the same way if we wanted to see what the uh, the MX records are just change the query type there hit enter and now we've got the mail servers for MSN now let's look at changing the initial server that it uses to do its requests against so by default you saw that I've got mine set to go to an open DNS server uh, but you can change that and have it point specifically to the root servers and look at what the results are coming back from there so if we, I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen here. If we do a DNS tracer, TAC O, TAC S, and the uh, TAC S is the one that lets you specify a different server. To do the root servers, you, all you got to do is put a period there. And then I'm going to do TAC 4 again, and then we'll do msn.com.
So you can see there that it is sending the request directly to the DNS root servers. And if we scroll back up here, oops, come on. You can see, so you know that there are root servers, there are top level domain servers. So what's happened here, the request went to the root server. The, res the root server responded that it didn't have the information there. Then the top level domain server started being queried. And if you'll notice, it queried each one of them, and there are 13 in total here. And each one gives back the same results. And you can see here that the, uh, the data was actually cached on that server. But then we get the same results here. Once you get to the end of the scan, it's going to display the A records. Since we didn't specify a, uh, qu a query type in the original request. So that's pretty much it for this one. Um, DNS Tracer seems to be geared more for sysadmins to use uh, if they're trying to troubleshoot maybe DNS delegation issues um, or they want to see how their zone data is being propagated out. Uh, the other options that are available in it, like the Tax C, for instance, uh, where you've got where you can enable negative caching or disabling local caching, those deal with um, information on your local DNS servers. Uh, I'm not going to cover those here, but if you're unsure of how these options work or specifically what they're doing, um, I'm going to put some links down in the description below. Uh, just to, to explain exactly what negative caching is, um, local caching, and those kinds of things. So check that out when you get a chance. So I hope the video was informative for you guys. Uh, if this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribe to the channel and share with your friends. Uh, my hope here is to build a community where we can help each other learn and grow in security, especially if you're just getting into it. So if you have any uh, comments or questions, please leave them below. And again, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day, guys.